Hi, welcome back. This is still Ken, and we're still on lesson 3 of our course on mechanics and motion in two or three dimensions. In the last video, we started our discussion with projectile motion, and in this video, we're going to have some examples of how to solve problems involving your projectiles. We start with our sample problems in projectile motion. For our first problem, on a level ground, a shell is fired with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal and feels no appreciable air resistance. Again, on a level ground, a shell is fired with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal and feels no appreciable air resistance. For the problems, find the horizontal and vertical components of the shell's initial velocity how long does it take the shell to reach its highest point? Find the maximum height above the ground. How far from its firing point does the shell land? And lastly, at its highest point, find the horizontal and vertical components of its acceleration and velocity. Let us solve the problem one by one. For the first problem, we're asked to find the horizontal and vertical components of the shell's initial velocity. Again, we're given with um, a shell fired from the level ground with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal. In this problem, you're given with the following items. So first, we have your initial velocity. So you have V0, which is equal to 50 meters per second. And we're also given with theta0, which is equal to 60 degrees above the horizontal. Above the horizontal. Okay. And... If you're going to draw the diagram for, for the given, so we're given with the vector V0 of magnitude 50 meters per second, and this is at 60 degrees, okay, from the or above the horizontal. And this is how your initial velocity looks like. So we are asked to find the horizontal and vertical components of the shell's initial velocity. That is, our target variables are the following. We are asked for v not x, the horizontal component, and then v not y, the vertical component. Your v not x, this is just the adjacent side with respect to the angle 60 degrees, and your V not y is just this part here. So let us now solve the problem. So for V not x, since this is just the adjacent side, you can use your cosine identity. So you have your V not cosine theta not. So this is Sorry. So this is 50 meters per second times cosine theta naught, which is 60 degrees. Your V naught x, this is equal to 25 meters per second. Let us now solve for your v not y. Your v not y is just the opposite side, uh, the opposite side of uh, with respect to your angle 60 degrees. So we have your v not sine theta not. So this is 50 meters per second sine 60 degrees. So your uh, v not y this is equal to or let's let us just use your this quantity here. You have 25 um, square root of 3 meters per second to be exact. So these are our answers. 
this is the horizontal component and this is the your vertical component for the next part of the problem we are asked to find for how how long does it take uh, the shell to reach its highest point so again we're asked to find for how long does it take the shell to reach its highest point so here we are asked for how long so meaning our target for this problem is the time t or the highest point or this is your time t1 that we have previously solved uh, in order to find the maximum height in our previous video so uh, just to remember okay just to have a review so to find the to find that time you have your dy this is equal to v naught y minus gt but at the highest point the um, vertical component of your velocity goes to zero so this is just zero here so you have zero this is equal to v naught y minus gt or we have v naught y and then this is equal to gt to find that time our time is equal to v naught y over g in the previous slide we found that your v naught y this is equal to v naught sine theta naught okay and this is over g but we already have that quantity and that is equal to 25 square root of 3 meters per second divided by 9.80 meters per second squared. So your meters per second and your meters per second here will cancel and then we're just left with a second quantity. A second quantity. So our time is equal to 4.42 seconds. So it takes 4.42 seconds for the shell to reach the highest point of the trajectory. For the next part, we are asked to find for the maximum height above the ground. So again, we are asked to find for the maximum height above the ground. So it is clear that for this problem, our target variable is your h. Again, this is the maximum height. And you already derived an equation for this one, for your maximum height. But for you to remember that uh, we started again with this derivation. So we had your y minus y naught. And then this is equal to, you have your y minus y naught. This is equal to v naught yt minus one half gt squared. So we started at the horizontals. So you have here zero. So you have y is equal to v naught yt minus one half gt squared. Okay. And this is your y is equal to v naught y. And our time, which we have already solved to be equal to 4.42 seconds. But just to, uh, just to derive, our time is equal to, you have v naught y over g minus 1 half g. And then this is v naught y over g squared. Uh, by solving this um, equation, simplifying, we have your y is equal to v naught y squared over 2g. Or, as we have derived before, your y is equal to, you have v naught squared sine squared theta naught over 2g. Okay? I hope, uh, I hope you remember this equation sometimes if you cannot memorize that one it is actually good to know how you are able to derive um, 
this equation here. So let us now solve for your h. So again, your h is equal to v naught squared sine squared theta naught over 2g. Okay, so you have your h is equal to, um, let's just write this way, you have your v naught which is 50 meters per second and then you have sine 60 degrees and we square all this term here so since we have square for v naught and then we square also your sine theta so you can square this quantity and then divide it by 2 times 9.80 meters per second squared your h is equal to 95.7 meters so the highest point or the maximum height reach of your shell is equal to 95.7 meters and this is quite high 95.7 meters okay for the fourth and the fifth part of your problem we have how far from its firing point does the shell land? Again, we're asked to find for how far from its firing point does the shell land. For letter D, okay, our target here is the uh, the range R. Okay, since we're asked for how far from its firing point does the shell land, so our target here is the range R. And we can automatically use the equation that we have derived in the previous video. Or just for a recap, we can derive it again here. So we started with your x minus x naught. And then this is equal to your v naught xt. If we start with the origin, you have here your x naught is equal to 0. So you have your x is equal to v naught x times time. Okay, um, the time, okay, the time that we are referring to here is twice the time it reached uh, the maximum height or you have, again, this is 2V naught Y over G. So here you have your X is equal to V naught X and then you have 2 V naught Y over g so we have your x is equal to um, your v naught x is just uh, v naught cosine theta naught and then your uh, v naught y is equal to v naught sine theta naught divided by g and again, we have this, um, we have the identity, okay, where in your 2 cosine theta naught, sine theta naught, this is equal to sine 2 theta naught. So we have your x is equal to You have v naught squared sine 2 theta naught over g. Or you can just automatically substitute the values that you have for your v naught x and then for your v naught y. And you can solve for your x or your range. Okay, Solving the problem, we have here again the values. This is 50 meters per second, and then you square that one, and then sine twice of theta. So your theta is 60 degrees. So you have your sine 120 divided by 9.80 meters per second squared. So your range R is equal to 221 meters. So we have three significant figures for that. 
this is your um, uh, parties point that the shell can reach uh, given the initial velocity of 50, uh, 50 meters per second and at 60 degrees above the horizontal. So lastly, at its highest point, find the horizontal and vertical components of its acceleration and velocity. So here, we're asked for your AX, your AY, and then your VX, and then your VY at the highest point. Okay. But this is actually straightforward. You know that the acceleration along the X is always zero since there is no resistance. So it moves at the constant velocity along the X. And then your AY, this is just equal to your negative G or this is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. That is always the case for your AX and then your AY. And at the highest point, you know that the projectile stops going upward and then it comes to a stop momentarily so your VY, uh, VY that is zero and since uh, we, do not, we do not have an acceleration along the X your uh, velocity along the X which is equal to your, your V naught X which is equal to 25 meters per second so that's it at the highest point let us have another problem. An archer tries to hit a target that is 20 meters away from him. He can release the arrow at 25 meters per second. Neglecting air resistance, estimate the angle at which the archer should aim to compensate for the fall of the arrow due to gravity. Again, an archer tries to hit a target that is 20 meters away from him. He can release the arrow at 25 meters per second. Neglecting air resistance, Estimate the angle at which the archer should aim to compensate for the fall of the arrow due to gravity. So for this problem, we are given with the following quantities. So we have your V0, which is equal to uh, 25 meters per second. And you're also given with the target that is 20 meters away from the archer. Let us assume that, or let us say that this is the um, the farthest point in which the um, the arrow can reach. So let's say this is your x uh, equal to your r, and we have 20 meters. Here, our target is the angle theta naught in which the archer should release the arrow in order to uh, in order for the arrow to reach 20, uh, the target 20 meters away from him so we have our target theta naught and you're given with v naught and then also given with r so this is just straightforward so we have uh, we know the formula for your r okay uh, we have your r is equal to v naught squared sine to theta naught over g okay and we're looking for this theta naught here so we have your rg this is equal to v naught squared sine to theta naught so this is rg over v naught squared and this is sine uh, to theta naught Okay, so uh, simplifying further, or okay, so you have your um, 2 theta naught, this is equal to sine inverse of Rg over P naught squared. Okay, so you can solve this one, your 2 theta naught, this is equal to is 18.28 degrees so we divide it by 2 so we get your theta naught and then this is equal to 9.14 degrees 
So the archer should aim the arrow at 9.14 degrees from the horizontal in order for, um, for the arrow to reach the target that is 20 meters away from the archer. So another sample problem. Anton claims that he can throw a dart at a dart board from a distance of 2 meters and hit the 5 centimeter wide bull's eye if, if he throws the dart horizontally with a speed of 20 meters per second. He starts the throw at the same height as the top of the bull's eye. Will Anton hit the bull's eye? Okay, let's try to figure out this problem. Uh, let's say here you have your bull's eye. Uh, let's imagine this one as the bull's eye here. Okay, this is this bull's eye here. Okay. Okay. This bull's eye is five centimeter wide. It's five centimeter wide. And Anton claims that he can throw a dart at a dartboard from a distance of 2 meters and hit this 5 cm wide bullseye if he throws the dart horizontally with a speed of 20 meters per second. He starts to throw at the same height as the top of the bullseye. So Anton claimed that if he throws the or if he aims the dart at this point here at the top of the bullseye, his arrow or he can uh, his dart can claim that the dart will hit this target bull's eye here. Okay, given the initial conditions that Anton claimed. And Anton is again is two meters. He is two meters away from the bull's eye. Okay. He aims the the dart okay at the at the same height as the top of the bull's eye so again at this point here okay just imagine that one throws the dart and of course since there is your gravity even if you even if you aim the dart at the at the bull's eye your dart will go a little bit downwards because of your acceleration due to gravity so let's see if indeed Anton can hit the bull's eye given the initial conditions that um, he has. So we're given with the following quantities. We have your x. Uh, this is 2 meters. He is 2 meters away from the bull's eye. And you have your v not x. This is 20 meters per second. We're actually also given with your V not Y. What is V not Y? Now remember that Anton aims the or throws the dart horizontally with a speed of 20 meters per second. So it's only a um, horizontal velocity. So your vertical velocity for your initial velocity is zero. Okay. So here, our target is your y, right? You want to find this area here where the uh, where the dart can can go to. So what we're actually looking for is if this is the bull's eye, we're looking for this y here, okay? And this y should be less than 5 centimeters. Less than 5 centimeters. Okay? Because if it is more than 5 centimeters, let's say you have 7 centimeters. Okay? And if this is 7 centimeters here, okay, once the uh, dart will go here, Anton will not anymore hit the bullseye. So why should uh, be less than uh, uh, five centimeters? Okay, so let us solve the problem. So we're looking for y. So you have your y is equal to v not y. 
you have your v naught to y t minus one half g t squared. So this is zero. So we have your y is equal to negative one half g t squared. However, we do not know the time it, the dart will reach the bull, the bull's eye. So we can use another equation. We have uh, to find time. To find t, we have your x is equal to v naught x t. So your time is equal to x over v naught x, and this is equal to two meters divided by twenty meters per second. So your time is equal to 0.1 second. Thus, you can use this time here. So we have negative one half, 9.80 meters per second squared times 0.1 second squared. Solving for this one, uh, your y is equal to 0 0.049 meters or in centimeters this is equal to 4.9 centimeters okay that is 4.9 uh, centimeters and by the way this is a negative negative uh, 0 0.049 this is negative 4.9 because again the arrow is now going downwards so you can consider this point here to be at your y equals to zero so you have negative 4.9 so if you can look at again the diagram it's somewhere around here which is almost outside of your bull's eye so just a little bit more or um, applying a lesser velocity perhaps um, Anton will not anymore hit the bull's eye you see it's just 0.1 centimeter uh, away from going outside of the of the uh, bull's eye diameter so let us have a last problem in a carnival booth you win a stuffed giraffe if you toss a quarter into a small dish so you have this one here uh, looking at the figure so you have here a uh, your starting point and then you have here a dish and your goal here is to toss the quarter from this point here and if you can toss the quarter and make it reach the dish at this point here you win the stuffed toy or you win the stuffed giraffe okay so that is our goal for this problem so the dish is on a shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand and is a horizontal distance of, of 2.1 meters from the point so from this point here up to this point here where the dish is this is 2.1 meters if you toss the coin with a velocity of 6.4 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal so you give the coin an initial velocity of uh, 6.4 meters per second and you toss it at an angle of 60 meters per second okay if you're going to do this one the coin lands in the dish so again in a carnival booth you win a, a stuffed giraffe if you toss a quarter into the small dish you win if the coin reaches the plate the dish is on a shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand and is uh, and is a horizontal distance of 2.1 meters from this point. If you toss the coin at a velocity of 6.4 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal, the coin lands on the dish or in the dish. You can ignore air resistance. So what is the height of the shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand? In what is the vertical component of the velocity of the quarter just before it lands on the dish? Okay, so if you try to look at uh, our given here, uh, we are given with the initial velocity, given with v naught, which is equal to uh, 6.4 meters per second, and then you're also given with theta naught of 60 degrees above the horizontal. 
And you're also given with this x here, okay? You're given with an x of x is equal to 2.1 meters. But uh, one of the uh, things that students can make a mistake on is they try to think that or they thought that uh, this x here is equal to the r, or in fact it is not. If you're going to uh, draw the tra trajectory of this projectile here, you'll see that this is not yet the maximum height or that is not, not the maximum range that the projectile can reach. So this is actually, this is not the this is not x equals the maximum range. It's just simply an x, okay. So for this, uh, let us solve the problem. So let's solve problem A. On A, what is the height of the shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand? So for this problem here, we are asked for this height here, this is your y. So A, our target here is your height, y, of the shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand. Okay, so if we let your x naught and y naught be at the point where the quarter leaves your hand, or where the quarter was tossed where quarter was tossed so we can use your uh, y minus y naught this is equal to v naught y t minus one half g t squared but we do not know the time but we can of course solve time from x is equal to v naught x t your time is equal to x over v naught x. So this is 2.1 meters. And your v naught x, going back again to the figure, this is your v naught here. Projecting it, this is your v naught x. Projecting it, this is your v naught y. Okay. This is again your v naught y. So your v naught x is equal to 6.4 meters per second and then cosine uh, 60 degrees. So you can solve for the time now. Your time, let us, your time is equal to uh, 21 over 32 seconds. So I will just be using this fraction here. So that we do not lose or we do not lose um, significant value to your to your y. Okay, we usually just round off the final answer. So any uh, value that we get from in between our solution, we do not usually round it off, and we round it off only we only round off the final answer. Okay. So here we can also solve for y. Your y is equal to v naught y t minus one half g t squared, or your y is equal to v naught y. Your v naught y is equal to uh, v naught sine theta naught times time, which is 21 over 32 seconds minus one half g t squared. And you can now solve this one. You can try it yourselves. The answer is one point. 53 uh, 1.53 meters so your y is equal to 1.53 meters okay so this y here is 1.53 meters so this is 1.50 uh, the I mean, the dish is 1.53 meters above the point where you toss your quarter. So let us solve for uh, the last problem. What is the vertical component of the velocity of the quarter just before it lands on the dish? So here, we're asked for your VY. Okay. 
Vy is, uh, if this is the trajectory of your projectile, okay, somewhere here, or let me redraw it. If you try to draw again the trajectory of your projectile, of course, it should land like this, right? So we are looking for the y component of this velocity here. So if you try to uh, project this one to the x-axis, you have here your vx, which is always constant, and you have here your vy, okay? And this is our target variable here. The vertical component of the velocity just before it uh, lands on the dish. So let's solve this one. Okay, so this is just your vy. We're looking for vy, so vy is equal to v not y minus gt. We already have the time, 21.32 seconds, and we know v not sine. Uh, we know v not sine theta naught, which is your v not y. So your vy is equal to v not sine theta naught minus g. And then you have 21.32 seconds. You can input the values and you see that the velocity is equal to negative 0 0.89 meters per second. So we get a negative because of course your quarter should go downwards in order for it to reach the um, to reach the dish. Okay, so that ends our problem solving. So to have a short recap of what we have discussed so far, so we have discussed your projectile motion and we have analyzed several problems involving projectiles. And in analyzing projectiles, we can use the four equations of motion for constant acceleration. But for, uh, for this lesson, we have put special interest to equations number one and equation number two. Uh, but here, we, we remember that we applied your ax is equal to 0 and then your ay is equal to negative g. And um, we have this one. If you're giving your projectile an initial velocity v0 and then an, and you, project it, you project it at an angle of alpha0, you can use the components of your projectile on the x-axis and the y-axis on the uh, two equations that we have here. But again, of course, you can use your four equations of motion for constant acceleration in your uh, problem solving involving your projectiles.